Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture, and it's a big one. Today, we're going to be talking about the newest project from Spanish Love Songs, No Joy. Those of you who have been following me for a while now, you know I don't throw around the term classic lightly, even with the very best that might drop in any given year. A big part of that is because, while I might be inclined to call something a classic in a moment during a review, I'll often hold back because how am I supposed to know how something's going to age or stick with me over weeks or months or years? Or if the popular consensus winds up aggressively turning on an act or just never getting on board? Or if just the world changes in a way where it just doesn't hit the way that it should. That can happen. All these thoughts have been on my mind in the three years since Brave Face is Everyone, the third album by Spanish Love Songs and one of a very limited list of perfect scores that I had given out in the decade I've had this channel. The project that felt like a crushing landmark in underground pop punk and emo that still floors me to this day. And among a certain subset of critics, especially on YouTube, it was embraced with just as much acclaim and topped a bunch of year-end lists beyond my own, even by some folks who don't really go into those genres in the same way. But I also wouldn't really say that it broke through, per se. The larger outlets didn't really go near it. A lot of critics didn't cover it. The whole emo stigma can still feel pretty real, especially alongside pop punk's painfully short-lived revival in that year or two. And as it was a project pre-lockdown in 2020 that dealt with systemic trauma, a lot of folks were not in a hurry to get up and revisit it, and I'll be honest, I understand why. But if 2018's Schmaltz was the Spanish Love Songs album that tipped off the radar for folks in the know, Brave Faces Everyone was the project that put enough people on notice in the scene that it prompted the band to get a larger profile for this upcoming album, No Joy, this year, with the singles getting more attention for the folks who would say that they miss Brave Faces Everyone, but heard enough buzz to be paying attention this time around. And this buzz was also suggesting that the band was going to be expanding their sound with more of a pivot towards synth-inflected Americana-inspired indie rock, and I'll admit it, that did concern me a decent bit. There were some synths on Brave Faces, everyone, but they were more peripheral, more for texture than driving the melody. And while that meant the album could feel a little uniform in its compositional structure, that was a formula that worked so goddamn well to provide the stable backdrop for the lyrics just to rip your guts out. And I didn't want the sound to become more of a distraction away from the writing. I also had to temper my expectations. Most acts will not repeat a perfect score in my books, even my absolute favorites. So while I was going in hoping for high quality, I was prepared not to be as blown away this time. So what did we get with No Joy? So alright, let's get this out of the way first. Yes, the album is absolutely excellent. A sort of stylistic expansion for Spanish love songs that show that they are just as equipped to take their emo into an indie rock palette and then pull it off amazingly well. And I'll be plenty comfortable calling this one of the best albums of 2023. It is not better than Brave Faces Everyone, and no, not just because it's embracing more synthetic elements, although I would be lying to say that it wasn't a small factor. The reality is that No Joy is trying to do something very different different in that there is a bit of a distance built in between the heart-rending trauma that felt like it could swallow the world whole in 2020 and where they're at now and here, which is more focused on what they are trying to extend to someone else going through that same hell or even darker. The initial comparison that came to mind, especially sonically, was the Wonder Years' Sister Cities, but probably the better one is Panorama by La Dispute. But where that project was extending it out to a partner, this is more for a friend or a family member, and that produces a very different brand of heartbreak or angst, and that can be a little tougher to contextualize. But by definition, that means right out of the gate, this album isn't quite going to be as punishingly personal and visceral. Not only does the scope feel smaller, the personal angst is less at the forefront. It's absolutely here, and it's key to how the project develops thematically, and if we're being fair, some of the best moments on Brave Faces Everyone had the protagonist 
as more of an observer to the whole downtrodden hell around him, but it also means that no joy is slower. It's a more melancholic burn that allows more atmosphere to manifest, especially in the production where frontman Dylan Slocum has admitted that over the past couple of years, he's been experimenting with more ambient soundscapes, which you might actually recognize from that 2022 remix album, Brave Faces, etc. And I also remember what happened with Sister Cities back in 2018. The sheer slowdown and embrace of more washed out gauzy textures that were a bit more mid-tempo, less driven by crushing frenetic groove, where it's less pop punk and it's more alternative in a vein closer to bands like Def Havana, especially that last album from 2022. Uh, look, you're gonna lose some of that punk crowd right out of the goddamn gate, especially as this project does not have the sheer momentum of Brave Faces Everyone, especially in a lot of the bass lines and percussion. Now, I blame part of this on the choice to bring in Carlos de la Garza for the mixing and engineering here. It's very similar to the issue I found with Paramore's This Is Why earlier this year. The drumming has a lot of complexity and verve, but especially the snare and the cymbals, they feel weirdly muffled on a lot of songs. They don't crack as strongly as they should. Kind of a shame because the guitar and vocal mixing can feel a lot sharper. The electric guitar picks up considerable muscle and some distorted texture on cuts like Middle of Nine or I'm Gonna Miss Everything or Mutable. And then the acoustic guitar is a great accent to really nail some of that choppy texture on Marvel and Here You Are. And then the bass lines have this sinuous punch. And again, Dylan Slocum's trembling bellow with the benefit of more backing vocals from the rest of the band. He only seems to get more power. He's still one of the most predominant and powerful frontmen that I've seen in modern indie rock and emo. Now the synths... They do have this analog oiliness to the pickups that has more body and it blends better than I would have expected. Absolutely recalls how some of these textures would creep across a lot of 80s Americana, but with a little bit more of an uncanny edge here, which kind of fits given the thematic arc of this album. But they are also the biggest stylistic diversion, and I can see how they might feel kind of distracting on cuts like Mutable, or how they blend in across some of the guitar tones on Rapture Chaser or the opener Lifers. And that's assuming that you don't mind the atmospherics that creep across songs like Pendulum. But I should stress that none of this takes away from what has always been Spanish Love Songs' greatest strength. These huge melodic hooks and a phenomenal sense of melodic groove. The tempos may have slowed down a little bit, but that sense of immediacy to get the choruses to really pop off, it is absolutely still here. Lead single Haunted is an incredible splash going into New Wave. Almost reminds me a little bit of The War on Drugs. Clean Up Crew as a terrific groove to underscore its breakdowns. Marvel is one of the catchiest songs on the entire album. And the closer, re-emerging Signs of the Apocalypse, it's probably the closest to a triumphant punk anthem that this album assembles. And it's a phenomenal way to end this project. The momentum might slow a little bit on cuts like Middle of Nine or Exit Bags, but they are kind of breathers that this album really does need, and they do wonders for the atmosphere. I am not complaining whatsoever. Because again, you kind of need some of that atmosphere to do some heavy lifting when we look over at the lyrics and the themes. Where, of course, the writing's going to be as bruising and as visceral as ever, with turns of phrase that are built to feel uncomfortably real and then pull no punches. But the focus is not on our protagonist's journey this time, but in grappling with someone close to them who is battling depression and for the most part is losing, where a lot of this album is overshadowed by a car accident with barely enough plausibility to be called that and not a suicide attempt. And what's kind of interesting is that there isn't just a straightforward narrative or story or arc across this album. The event itself spills over several songs, but it's also peppered with flashbacks and flash forwards and shifts in perspective, where you might get details around this friend or family member where the depression and the struggle to get out and succeed might be a common bond, but the protagonist might be dreaming bigger and is not giving up in spite of rational common sense and everything else telling him that it would be so much easier to live a smaller, more normal life like on Cleanup Crew. Another echo of Def Havana's The Present is a Foreign Land from last year. And keep in mind that Spanish love songs are still acutely aware of the poverty and systemic rot in which they still have to live. So the added context now becomes seeing their 
their success reflected in eyes and faces that were not nearly so lucky, which adds a very different shade of gray to this entire bleak endeavor. And you know, the frustration feels palpable this time. Pendulum has its protagonist grapple with being seen as an enemy or deviant for their queerness, where even if they do manage to find love, it's hard to find joy in a world that would trod you underfoot, especially in the US right now, where you have to pray the pendulum swings back in your direction. And Middle of Nine gets even darker as they watch someone consumed by sickness and alcohol abuse and gambling addiction and conspiracy theory rot, which might be all more deeply rooted in their own personal trauma, and the genuine fear that said impulses to go out might be shared. And it leads to songs that are emotionally messy. Haunted is one of the more uncomfortably realistic portrayals of trying to help someone with depression that I've heard on record since, well, Jason Isbell's Death Wish earlier this year. And this song also explicitly calls back to Brave Faces Everyone with the hard reality of, yeah, it's gonna be this bleak forever. Just please try to keep on living? And some of the album's most poignant moments are just its justifications of life. The most memorable ones on Marvel with its line, Stay Alive Out of Spite, a song that gives the double bird to late capitalist self-help toxic positivity, making it to the end of the world just to piss off everyone who said that you wouldn't. And yeah, you know, we're going to come back to some of the other implications there because Spanish love songs do recognize them. But that whole context of the end of the world and time itself also lingers over this album, not just in the context of so much of my past and future has value and deserves to not be forgotten by my early exit, but also in Rapture Chaser, which in coming with the reality that, yeah, pain's everywhere, are you searching for just more pain, or do you want to try and actually get better and maybe escape? For as crushingly heavy as this project can be, it's not a wallow. It knows the work is endless and painful, and you probably won't figure it all out by the end, and you're gonna backslide. But as they see life reflected in their dying friend on exit bags, if you can keep on dreaming for the impossible, you shouldn't stop. It's why the final song is so powerful, because like across so much of this project, it is a re-engagement with the mundane of just living, and a strident point that not everyone has the systemic or emotional ability to cling to optimism in the same way. On the bridge, Slocum delivers a question whether or not he deserves to be happy, and is basically just told no, because there's a whole lot of people who, who do not have that privilege and success and space to be as free. And what's powerful is what actually happens next. He wishes that he could kill the optimist to be more doomer-pilled than ironic, but he can't. And he won't allow himself that nihilistic freedom. He's not going to romanticize any of these dreams, he's lived too much of them to do that. But he's also not going to take himself out of the equation that we are all in. His plea is that you don't take yourself out either. That being said, it is the sort of plea that can feel all the more helpless. Brave Faces Everyone had the jolt of driving towards action because, yeah, we're all in this together. This is a different kind of pain, mingled often with guilt, where even the trace elements of success that you find, most of which you question are worth it at all, they're placed sharply in contrast with folks going through it a lot worse who won't get that success. So it's not just maintaining joy and hope for yourself, but for those who can't, it's getting out the other side, but knowing that there are those behind you that you want to help and ultimately you won't be able to do so much because on some level, they got to be the ones to choose to keep on going on. And it can't be as anthemic necessarily because there is a sharp limit on how much you can really do and they know it. That makes for a difficult listen. But again, I'm an optimist at heart. And I fucking love this album. The performances are electric, the writing is spellbinding, and a greater diversity of sound is pulled off remarkably well. Even if I know a project like this is not built to cross over, I appreciate the high hopes, but it's way too raw, even with the backing of indie rock to do it. It's not my favorite project this year, I do think it's a bit of a step down, but it absolutely fits in the pantheon of projects that try to do the difficult work of healing, grappling with one's own self-destructive tendencies, and hell, maybe find a reason to keep going anyway even if it is just out of spite. If that's not worth your attention, I don't know what is. Please check this out.
So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I would be extremely grateful. Again, I have no idea how much this review is going to take off. The whole last time I covered Spanish love songs and Brave Faces Everyone, I think it kind of got a bit of a synergistic impact that a lot of people really felt that project at its time. I can see this one being more divisive. We will have to see. But beyond that, if you guys have any other albums that you would like me to cover or get on my schedule or just want to help support the channel or argue with me on my Discord, the link to my page Patreon is right over there. Or hell, if you want to support the channel, I also got my link to my merch. Check the description. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. That's what the comments are for. But as always, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.